Hey everybody, how's it going? Gonna do a tutorial here today. Uh, we're gonna figure out how to use Reaper for a voiceover in a tutorial kind of situation. So sometimes you might want to use Reaper in order to demonstrate something, but also use it to record your voice at the same time. So you can actually have a tutorial video with voice. So uh, let's take a look. All right, so I've got Reaper opened up here. I've got my project going. Okay, but what you can see here is that I have a project running. I have just one single audio track uh, loaded to it right here. Uh, you know, currently recording, and this is this is just where my my commentary, where my uh, voice is actually recording to. So, if if you're wanting to do a demonstration of Reaper and still be able to record your voice and, and still be able to use Reaper because you know if, if if I just started adding tracks here to demonstrate something uh, if I wanted to start and stop playback I'd have to stop and start recording my commentary and that's kind of a pain in the butt so in order to in order to um, find a way around this we're gonna have to use a feature of Reaper that is uh, it's basically an undocumented feature. I just found this after a full day of digging around uh, on on the uh, Kakos uh, web forums and uh, Justin the creator had actually made mention of this feature. So let's go to options and let's go to uh, let's see here there's an option here that says show Reaper resource path in Explorer or Finder so if you, if you click on that, it'll bring up a uh, Windows Explorer or File Explorer. And this is actually open to the path where all of Reaper's configuration files, and if you do scripting and things like that, this is where your uh, custom scripts and custom actions and things like that go. So let's uh, scroll down here a little bit. And the file we're after is called reaper.ini. And this is kind of the, the main configuration file for Reaper. Um, I'm just gonna right click on it and say edit. Uh, I believe, I don't think I've done any file association here for a .ini file. I think if you just click edit it knows to open it in notepad. So you can see there's a, this is a pretty good size file. There's all sorts of stuff uh, having to do with um, recent projects and startup options and things like that. So what you do is add this line right here. And it's a rear route underscore loopback equals and then some number. Uh, Justin had suggested, suggested eight. I'm going with eight. Um, for my purposes, I could go with two. This is essentially uh, telling it how many of these special loopback inputs and outputs you want. So we'll leave it at eight here. So uh, just you don't have to add it right at, at the top of the file. Just somewhere under this Reaper heading, put it. So I just I went ahead and put it first thing. Uh, I think there are a couple of other headings down farther in the file. Uh, so you, you don't, you don't want to stick them under those accidentally or it won't recognize it. So you add that, you save the file. Uh, I've already got it added here so I'm just going to close this. But uh, save it. Uh, if you have Reaper open, uh, shut it down and open it back up. And when you do, you should now, uh, I, let me see here, let me drag my uh, mixer window over here. So this is my, my mixer window, and on here I have, uh, you, you know, you've got your master track here. Uh, on this I.O. button here, on the master track, you can click on that, and it'll show you where your master is currently routed to. So I've got mine routed uh, out my analog 1 and 2, which is plugged directly into my monitors. So what we want to do here, or actually we won't do it quite yet, but just to illustrate what happened when we changed that loopback option or added that loopback option. So you'll have all of your uh, analog uh, outputs here, but now you'll have these new outputs. So you've got eight stereo pairs of loopback outputs, or you have eight mono loopback outputs. And these are what's going to allow us to essentially run two concurrent projects at the same time and feed one project into the other. So I'll go ahead and close this for now. I'll scoot the mixer window out of the way. 
And how I uh, arrange this and get this to work is I use Reaper's project tabs. So right now I just have one single project open. Reaper has a cool feature where if you go to file and down here there's a new project tab. So if I open a new project and you can see up here in the corner my original project that I'm speaking into and recording into right now is still open and it opened up a new tab of just a blank project and I can click on them to tab between them my original project and my new project. So this new project here is what I would use to do a demonstration. Uh, so here in this new tab, let me see if I just uh, open some random project and uh, let's do uh, one of these scratch things. Uh, let's see what this one is. No idea. Actually, I think this one's empty. It was a scratch project I started and <laughs> never recorded anything to. Oh, oh, there is actually a little bit. Okay, all right. I'm sure this probably sounds like hammered crap, but um, we should be able to at least illustrate that I can, while I'm still recording to this project, I can uh, play and stop another project. Although, you won't hear anything on this recording. Uh, although, I'll probably hear it here through my headphones. So let me hit hit play here. And yeah, I can actually hear a little bit through here. All right, so I won't make you watch me listen to something that you can't hear, but let's make it so you can hear this. So I so you can hear what I'm doing. So you can see how you can demonstrate in one project tab while recording all the output to another. So over here in my, uh, what I'll call my uh, commentary, this is kind of the, the background project, I'm going to double click and add a new track. And I'll just call this uh, uh, Reaper Master Output. All right, and I am going to have it take as its input a stereo input, and I'm going to say take it from loopback input 1 and 2. Now I'm going to flip over to my foreground project and as I started to do a little earlier, kind of put the cart ahead of the horse there, now I will go ahead and click on uh, the I.O. above the master and I'm going to tell it to add a new hardware output. I'm going to tell it to send to loopback output 1 and 2 and that corresponds to the loopback input 1 and 2 that we're reading off of in that other project. Um, you kind of have a decision to make here. You can either leave the original master output routing intact or you can mute it here. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and mute it here and since I muted it there in my background project, let's scoot this out the way here, in my background project, let's flip over to that, I'm going to put this in monitor mode. So I'm going to say record monitoring on. I'm going to arm it for recording. And now it's actually recording from that loopback output. So let's flip back to that, that kind of foreground project. Um, you hear some really uh, uh, sloppy guitar and drums here, but this was just a, a one-off scratch thing. So let's, I'll just hit play. <laughs> Alright, so now let's flip over. Oh! Sorry about that everyone, that was uh, extremely loud. So I'll turn that down, and actually what I'll do, that's still just diming out the... <laughs> just forming black bars over here. Flip back over here. I'll go to my master outlet, and I have a feeling I know why that's so loud, because I probably have... Copy of L1 running, so it's just absolutely crushing. So I'll just I'll turn that off. All right, I'll flip back to the background project. Get my mixer out of the way. Now you can see that's recording at a much more agreeable uh, volume here. So if I I'll go ahead and turn that back up. 
So it'll be kind of at a, I don't know, at least a comfortable level to where you could kind of talk over it. it might be a little loud, but you can play with it here. You can play with it and uh, uh, fade it in and out. Um, over on your foreground project, you can stop it. Um, you can, you know, start it back up. Uh, so you can just do what you would normally do here you, if you want to show somebody if you want to show somebody what you're trying to do uh, and then you can see in the background project uh, you can see the gaps in the audio there where it's actually stopped and started along with it so it's just recording in real time the whole time in the background all right well hey hopefully that shows you enough to, to at least get started with this uh, there may be a, <clears throat> a couple of better ways to do these things if there are uh, as always, just let me know in the comments below, ask any questions, make any suggestions you might have, and I'll see you guys later.